whatever you want, but just know that like if you use Hey guys, Mila Clark Buckley, The Hangry Woman here, and today I'm doing a review of Nespresso's new pumpkin spice cake pod. Before we get started, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe. It helps my channel so much. And let me know down in the comments below if you love pumpkin spice cake or if there's another flavor of coffee that you want me to try. I love making videos about Nespresso. I also make videos about diabetes if you watch my channel, so lots of sugar-free drinks around here, lots of fun, great coffee recipes. And also if you want behind the scenes coffee content, you can sign up for my Patreon. It's a way to support the channel while also getting some great behind the scenes looks at how I do everything and also special recipes just for you as my patrons. I love being able to do that for you guys and I'm just really excited to give you the lowdown on pumpkin spice cake today. So let's get to it. Nespresso says that pumpkin spice cake is sweet and cinnamon. Why they love it, it's a wide range of spice notes mainly defined by cloves, cinnamon, and cardamom, melts with sweet pumpkin flavor, and creates this smooth Arabica blend from Ethiopia, Central, and South America for an indulgent treat inspired by pumpkin spice cakes. When I read that description, I did not expect this pod to taste like pumpkin. I thought that it was going to be heavier on the spice notes, so I wasn't surprised when I gave it my first sip, and I was like, oh, okay, this is very clove heavy, very cinnamony. It's that spice in the spice cake, not necessarily the pumpkin in the pumpkin spice cake. So I wasn't surprised by that at all. I was surprised by how strong the pumpkin flavor was, especially because you guys have heard me talk about other barista collection, not that this is a barista collection pod, but you've heard me talk about barista collection pods where I just didn't feel like the flavors were there. Um, car caramel cookie is one that I talk about all the time. Chocolate fudge, both of those just like don't have each of those characteristics of those flavors to me, even when paired with milk. So I thought pumpkin spice cake is gonna be the same. It's gonna be mild in flavor. The flavor is not gonna be that intense. You're not really gonna be able to tell what's in the pod. And I was so wrong. This pod is so intense, like not in terms of like the body or the roastiness of the coffee, but it's intense in terms of flavor. You get hit with those spice notes very quickly, especially if you drink it black. Adding milk does calm it down a little bit and softens the spice notes. So I feel like that's the best way to have it and that's how I made it. I'll talk a little bit about how I made it before, but we're gonna do a little sip test and then I'm going to walk through how I made this drink and what might be a good way for you to do it and maybe some different combinations that work really well with the pumpkin spice cake coffee. This is a 7.77 ounce pod, so it is a full cup of coffee. One unique characteristic that I don't think Nespresso is really talking about is that this pod is a half calf. So if you don't want a fully caffeinated drink, this is actually a really good pod. If you like pumpkin spice flavor, it's a great pod because it's half caffeinated. It's not fully caffeinated. And so you don't have as much of the caffeine, which, you know, you don't get that like buzzy feeling. I think after drinking this one in particular, also the coffee itself is pretty soft. I think that the spice notes cover up the actual taste of the coffee, which is really interesting. And I get a whole lot more spice than I do coffee, which I thought was just a neat characteristic of this, especially because like I said before, I complain all the time about some of the barista collection pods not having that flavor intensity. This one definitely does it. Okay, so I have here just a little sample of coffee, so can tell, here's what it looks like. When it brews, it has a really good crema on top. Um, it brews and it looks very, very creamy. And then once the crema dissipates, you have this like, you know, kind of like translucent coffee. It's not like a very bold or dark roast. So I found that to be very nice about this coffee. And then overall, when you sniff it, you can smell the pumpkin spice. I think that this is very, they list the ingredients, let me see. I wanna make sure. They list the ingredients as cloves, cinnamon, cinnamon, and cardamom. And I think that, I don't know if they did it intentionally on like 
most to least, but I definitely get the clove in here. It's very clove forward. So if you're not a fan of clove, which it's a very strong and intense type of flavor, you might not like this coffee. If you are a fan of cinnamon, I don't really get cinnamon here as much as I get the clove, but I think that it is pretty good. You could always add a little bit of cinnamon to your coffee to play up that cinnamon note, and that actually would be really, really great with milk. So here's the coffee. And yeah, just tasting it again, I get that clove immediately. I get a tiny bit of bitterness without any milk or any sweetener in it. And then I also feel like, you know, it definitely, that spice for sure hits you and hits you pretty hard. So overall, I think it's a good coffee if you like pumpkin spice. If you're not into pumpkin spice flavor, this is not gonna be for you because it's incredibly, incredibly strong in here. Okay, now I made a drink and I'm gonna walk you through what I did and how I did it. So I just did a pumpkin spice oat milk iced latte. And that was the best way that I thought to have this. I really like cold drinks, as most of you know. And so typically my default is to make an iced coffee with most every coffee that I have. It's pretty rare for me to drink a hot coffee. I have to really be in the mood for it. So a lot of the recipes that you see me make are gonna be iced. So what I did was pretty simple. I added about four ounces of ice to my cup, and then I poured oat milk over that. After I did that, I drizzled some amaretti syrup over the top. I used a really interesting kind of syrup, actually. It was like a cream syrup, which I think made the coffee and the oat milk a little creamier, but then also added in a little bit more pumpkin flavor. One thing that I will say about the pumpkin spice cake pod is that it really needs no help. Like you could drink it with plain milk and it would be fine. Sometimes adding like, I, I think I used like Chobani oat creamer at one point for it, which was pretty good. I use Oatly plain oat milk, full fat in this recipe. You could use like really whatever you want, but just know that like if you use something with extra pumpkin flavor, the pumpkin flavor is already here. It's gonna amp it up and it might be a little too much, so just be wary of that. I feel like this is best with a plain milk that doesn't have any flavor. If it has sweetener, that's up to you and that's okay. I like to control the sweetener in my drinks, so I usually go for a plain oat milk. So I poured plain oat milk over the top of the ice, put over that amaretti syrup, which was really, really delicious. I then added a little bit of a drizzle of caramel and then poured the coffee over the top. And so once I did all of that, um, kind of got everything mixed up, I really, really liked the outcome of what this coffee tasted like. The milk to me softens the notes of clove and helps the cinnamon actually stand out a little bit and, and the cardamom too. Like I think when I first tasted this coffee, it had a bit of like a licorice-y taste and I like that. I think that that tastes good, but some people don't like that. So I think having the milk and a little bit of sweetener of some sort softens it just a little bit. Like I said, I used like a tiny bit of that amaretti syrup because it was another pumpkin spice flavored syrup, even though it was cream, because I didn't want to overdo it. I think it's really easy to overdo it on this coffee with pumpkin spice. It, it honestly stands on its own. Just do like plain milk, ice, and the coffee, and you're golden. You don't have to do anything fancy with it. That pumpkin spice flavor is going to shine through and it's gonna be delicious. I also think milk takes away that licorice bitterness, and like I said, softens those flavors, so it lets it be a little bit of a softer coffee, a little bit more like what a pumpkin spice cake would taste like, I think. I also think it's really interesting that they went for spice flavor instead of pumpkin flavor. I didn't have last year's pumpkin spice cake, and I'm gonna save my pumpkin spice cake from this year for next year so that I can compare the two to see how they change the flavors. I have heard that this one tastes a little bit different than the one that was released last year. I'm interested in why they didn't go for actual pumpkin flavor. Maybe that's hard to infuse into coffee. It's a lot easier to get spices in the coffee instead of a pumpkin type flavor. So maybe that's why 
I mean, I can only speculate, I can only guess. But yeah, I think, you know, if you are looking for pumpkin flavor, you're gonna be disappointed. This is all about the spice, not about the pumpkin. And it's still a really great coffee, but if you're looking for more of that pumpkin, you probably won't get that. Whereas if you're looking for the actual spice, pumpkin spices, you'll definitely get that with this. I think uh, also one thing that is interesting to me is that in pumpkin spice, they used cardamom, they used cloves, and they used cinnamon. I normally, for my pumpkin spice, also add a little bit of ginger. I love like the spiciness of ginger, and that's what I wish this had. I wish it had a, just like a tiny bit of that like sharp, spicy ginger flavor, because the cloves are so licorice-y and so savory, I think that would be a really nice addition to the blend of this coffee. Maybe it'll change in the future, we'll see, but I think, you know, for what this is, it's pretty good. Um, I wouldn't say that this is my personal favorite coffee. I think it is a little overhyped. To me, it's, it's a good coffee to drink during the fall season because it's got those like fall flavors, but it's not something that I would choose outside of fall and probably not something that I would choose personally if I weren't reviewing coffee pods. So to me, it's just okay. It's good for what it is, but I think it'd be like a random choice for me, <laughs> for sure. For all, I really like preparing the coffee this way. It does really well with a little note of caramel. Like I said, you can go easy on any of the other pumpkin spice flavors and it'll be absolute perfection, but this is probably my favorite way to have this coffee. So I hope you give it a try. The recipe is down below in the description box and I'll also put it up on my website at hangrywoman.com. All right guys, that's it for this video. I'm gonna go and enjoy my little, ah! I don't know if that's ASMR. <laughs> I'm gonna go enjoy my little iced coffee. I hope you give it a try. Please let me know down in the comments what you think about this pod. I think my review is coming pretty late, so people have had a chance to try this pod, and I'm just curious about what your thoughts are, if you feel the same as I do, that it's just an okay pod, or if you're like obsessed with it, you're gonna buy 20 sleeves of it. Either way, you do you. I'm really glad that you're enjoying this if you are enjoying it, and that's where the video is gonna end today. Thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate every single time that you give this video a thumbs up, every single time that you comment, every single time that you just watch the video or share it with a friend. It means so much to me and I'm so glad to have such a great community here on YouTube. I appreciate you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care of yourselves. Bye. Ah! I don't know if that's ASMR. <laughs>